Are you the firstborn bossy one, middleborn peacemaker, or the lastborn troublemaker? The birth order theory says that where you're born in relation to the rest of your siblings says a lot about your personality. People often joke that if you're the firstborn in the family, you're the responsible one that bosses everyone around. This is completely opposite to the youngest child in the family who's typically seen as the least responsible and sometimes the troublemaker who does things their way. But what about the middle child? Middle children are often the peacemakers who are easily forgotten. In the early 1900s, an Austrian psychiatrist, Alfred Adler, introduced the world to the idea of birth order shaping who you are. Adler theorized that firstborns tend to be super responsible, middle kids crave attention, and youngest siblings are often adventurous and even rebellious. The firstborn. Have you ever noticed how the firstborn in every family seems to get all the time and attention from their parents? It makes sense when you think about it. Being a first-time parent is tough, and it comes with a big learning curve. So naturally, first-time parents tend to be extra careful and follow all the rules because they don't want to mess up. The extra attention often makes first-born kids more responsible and mature. They're the ones who get all the trial and error parenting, so they end up being the guinea pigs for new parenting techniques. Plus, they're the ones who have to set an example for their younger siblings, which adds to their sense of responsibility. So it's not just about getting all the attention. Firstborns often carry the weight of being the practice child and the role model all at once. There are some ups and some downs to being the firstborn. Studies show that firstborn kids often have a head start when it comes to brain development, which can give them a leg up in academics. Firstborn kids are often seen as organized, high achievers, responsible, mature, and natural leaders. Well, now you might be thinking, wow, firstborns have it made. Sure, there's some cool perks to being the firstborn kid, but it's not all it's cracked up to be. They have to deal with the sky-high expectations and often have type A personalities that never let them cut themselves any slack. They fear failure intensely. They feel like nothing they accomplish in life is ever good enough and can sometimes be extremely inflexible, rarely stepping out of their comfort zone. Plus, they often end up as the babysitter for their younger siblings. So while being the firstborn might seem great, there's a lot of not so great stuff that comes with it too. If you're a firstborn watching this video, make sure to hit the like button. The middle child. Parenting is like any other job in the world. The more you do it, the easier it gets. So when the next kid comes along, parents are much less strict. They ease up a little bit because they have some experience under their belts. But the downside to this is that parents tend to pay less attention because, let's face it, they're juggling more kids. We all know what happens when we pay less attention to something. They either become forgotten or they fall through the cracks. Unfortunately, that's what happens to the middle kid. This makes the middle child want to make everybody happy to get the attention they don't get compared to their older and younger siblings. Sadly, this makes the middle child feel left out. So they struggle to find their identity because they don't know where they fit in. That's why you'll find that middle kids have a lot of friends. In a way, this is how they compensate for the lack of attention they get from their parents. Middle children are usually the people pleasers. They're kind of rebellious, they get a lot out of their friendships, they're extremely social, and also the peacemakers. I know it sounds like there's nothing great about being the middle child, but I promise, they have some pretty awesome strengths that their older and younger siblings don't have. The middle child is known to just go with the flow, and some research has shown that middle kids score higher in agreeableness than their siblings. The middle child has a lot of strong friendships and bonds with people outside of their family. It's not surprising because they feel left out in their own family. This makes them a little bit less tied to the family than their siblings. That's why you'll find that middle kids are usually the first to boldly go on trips with another family or have sleepovers at a friend's house. See, they used to be the baby until a new sibling came along and took their spot. 
So imagine being adored and loved one minute and the next feeling ignored and unwanted because your parents brought home a younger, cuter version of you. That's what it feels like to be the middle child. They often notice that they don't get as much attention as their trailblazing older sibling or the adored youngest. This can make them feel like their needs and wants aren't as important or that they're being ignored by their parents. It's a tough spot to be in and it makes the middle child feel undervalued. The youngest. Let's talk about the babies of the family. The youngest kids are often the most pampered, sometimes even called spoiled. By the time the last child comes around, parents are more experienced and tend to take a more laid back approach to raising them. They're also much less strict and tend to baby the youngest since it's the last child they'll raise. And because of all of this babying, the youngest kids know exactly how to work their parents to get what they want. Because they have to work harder for attention with older siblings, usually in the spotlight, they watch and learn from their older siblings, pick up on tricks and get what they want. Plus, with parents being relaxed, they know how to push boundaries and find ways to bend the rules. All of this just makes them great at charming or persuading others. It's no surprise that many famous celebrities and comedians are the youngest in their families. Youngest children are raised with a lot of free reign, making them more outgoing, fun-loving, charming, and free-spirited. But this also makes them more immature, self-centered, dependent, and prone to risk-taking compared to their older siblings. The only child. Did you know that about 20% of American households with children are one-child families? It's also the fastest-growing family unit. My best friend in school was an only child, while I grew up as the youngest in my family. When I was a kid, I thought there was nothing better than being the only child. She never had to share anything with anyone. She had the love and attention of her parents 100% of the time, and she wasn't overshadowed by an older sibling. Basically, they're the firstborn forever. There's no one else after them. I think the younger me had the right idea that only children are in quite a unique position, but there are some drawbacks to this too. They have to shoulder the burden of all of their parents' expectations, which is why they tend to be more mature for their age. They tend to be perfectionistic and sensitive. Only children are also more imaginative and self-reliant. This is because without siblings to play with, they tend to spend a lot of time entertaining themselves, which boosts their creativity. They come up with all sorts of games and scenarios to keep busy. Plus, they interact more with adults, making them more mature and independent. They learn to handle conversations and situations on their own. They also get more focused attention from their parents, which can make them more confident and willing to pursue their interests by themselves. And because they don't have siblings to share responsibilities with, they become more resourceful and learn to solve problems on their own. Now that you know these personality traits, do you recognize any of them in yourself? As possibly the oldest child, the middle child, or the youngest? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to spread loving kindness to all beings around you and be the change you want to see in the world. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.